This is the PodCraft Podcast, episode 007 for Monday, August 31st. Today we'll review a beer from KC Brewing and a collab from Bottle Logic and Pure Project. This is the PodCraft Podcast, where we talk about craft beer from Southern California and beyond. I'm your host, Chris. Here's your host, Charlie. Yo. We have Tech Guy Steve doing Tech Guy Steve stuff. Uh, today we're going to review a beer from KC Brewing and a collab from Bottle Logic uh, Pure Project. Uh, to connect with the show and to get all the show notes with links to everything mentioned in this podcast, go to www.thepodcraft.com. The website also has links to help you subscribe so you won't miss an episode, links to connect on social media, photos of the beers we consume during today's recording, links to the breweries, uh, more details on the beers mentioned, and our direct email address for feedback. Just head to the website at www.thepodcraft.com for all of the links. Also, please consider recommending the podcraft to all craft beer fans in your life. Cheers. Yeah, definitely do that. Do that. Here we go. We're, gonna, we're, we're starting off, but we'll talk while I'm popping this. Thing. All right. What do, you, uh, what do you got there, Charlie? Just a minute. Ah. Oh. Ooh, good. yeah. That's a Casey Brewing. This is the Funky Blender Preserves uh, Raspberry, seven point seven percent alcohol by volume. We're we're hitting a semi big bottle, seven hundred and fifty milliliter. Ooh! So there you go. But what did you drink while you were uh, out and about? Oh yeah. So um, man, I had a um, I had a a pale ale from June Lake Brewing uh, at a at a little brew pub in um, in Mammoth. Uh, it, was, it was super tasty, rather light. How about you? What'd you uh, What'd you have this week? I I doused that last fruit monster down my palate. Ooh, that's a that's a good beer. And uh, I had uh, what did I get from Green Cheek? What did you pick up the other day? Cocoa Hut. And what was the other one? I had that one too. The, Something um, Sleep. I'm not certain. It was Haze, good. The Hazy IPA. Yeah, they were both good. Yeah, both very good. They're both good. Yeah, they make some good beers up there. Steve, how about you? What'd you have? Yeah, I tried the Raspberry Blush from it's MK. Oh yeah, McKellar. Yeah, McKellar. Pretty good. I, did you like it? Yeah, yeah. I bought some fruit beers, so that uh-huh. was the first one I tried. Did you get any okay. coffee in that raspberry blush? <laughs> I don't remember <laughs> tasting any coffee at all. The, what other fruit beers did you buy? Um, it's something from Founders. It's like okay. a raspberry something or another. Okay. But I haven't, I haven't tried it yet. Yeah. Exciting. Not, uh, Steve is just turning a new leaf here. He's turned the corner. We've, we've, uh, you, wait a minute. We didn't give him any of that. Here you go, Tiger. <laughs> How uh, accessible is this bear? This is from uh, Glenwood Springs, Colorado. Um, if you go up there, I don't know if they'll have this exact one, but trust me, Casey Brewing has some of the best Belgian style beers that you can get in the country. Yeah, I mean, an unbelievable uh, sour uh, brewery or yeah. blendery. I mean, everything the guy makes is legit. I've I've sat in their uh, their tap room for a week one day, and uh, <laughs> it was fantastic. I mean, it was outstanding delicious everything i tasted his collabs with uh outer range were just dynamite i mean they were so super cool and tasty i mean they had a uh, a mexican lager in there that was really ex- i was excited about i mean it yeah. was super tasty um they had a couple of stouts and uh, man the hazies are just ridiculously good and i think that's uh in part with uh, out of range because they make some crazy hazy. Yeah, no, that's uh, they're definitely on my hit list. Uh, out of range, but the um, the exciting part about it was I went to the uh, to the brewery, the actual brewery, and because uh, they have this brand new tap room downtown Glenwood Springs, beautiful little town. If you ever want to go there, it's it's really super cool. A lot of eateries, and they have their own uh, hot spring too. So that's pretty mm. cool. Well, this brewery backs up uh, on a river that goes by, and it's it's just super phenomenal. I mean, if you want to get an experience, I don't think they're open right now for tours because of the COVID, but um, when they do reopen, that is a must-do. It's 20 bucks to go do the tour, but you drink like four or five beers while you're there anyway, so it's well worth it. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like a, a phenomenal experience, and, and their beers, every beer I've had from Casey has been just a... Uh um, lights out on yeah. this uh, to, to kind of look at the color. It looks like a little, like cranberry. Yeah, it like does. Cranberry exactly juice or... like cranberry. <laughs> but it's raspberries. It smells 
really and funky. here's the thing about uh, Casey is they get like 90 or not, yeah I think it's 99 percent of the stuff they do with beers with their beers is from Colorado so they have their peach preserve or whatever it is I'm telling you it's the they have the palisade peaches in there and they are lights out because I've had one of those peaches and they are fantastic they're pretty good huh? oh they're just they just don't taste like any other peach I've ever had so you know what else is pretty good this beer it smells um <sighs> it tastes fantastic Definitely, uh, a, you, know, you can smell like the acidity. Yeah, a bit. Well, he 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 knows what he's doing. He's got a good crew over there. I mean, they're super knowledgeable, and they actually explained uh, during that tour that they were um, they had gone over to Belgium to uh, to see how they did it. So they were at uh, what's uh, they were at uh, what is the name of the um, the one over there in Belgium? It's always, Cantillon. Cantillon, yeah, and. Uh, they were, you know, met the the old guy that John ran, Roy, yeah, and they said he was unbelievable. I mean, it was such yeah. an experience for him. So that was that's what uh, motivated them more and more to do better and better. And and they're they're just phenomenal. I I can't say enough about them. I mean, it's I'd sit here and blabber on for forty five minutes about that brewery because that's how good they are. So in my personal opinion, but I like, you know, I like what they do. I like how they're doing it. And it's, uh, this beer, especially if you look at the bottle, it has a drum set set up and there's four drums and they have these raspberries stock or stacked on top of these drums. And, you know, with like the drumsticks hitting them and it's all splattering all over. It looks pretty cool, but, uh, that tells you how much fruit they have in it. Cause they have another one with less fruit and it's only two drums have the raspberries in it. So kind of cool. Half the amount, I guess, but, uh, it tastes like a raspberry jam. Doesn't it? Like it's just exploding preserves. With raspberries. Preserves is what they say. That's, um, it's pretty phenomenal. Beer. Well, I preserved this for about, it's been about a year because the last time I was there was in September. Um, a year ago. Yeah. And I was, uh, I was up on top of the, uh, the mountains up there in Colorado and I went ahead and spent, uh, like three days in Glenwood Springs, um, hanging out and drinking their beer and going to the brewery and stuff and kind of scoping out that town. It was pretty cool. Really yeah, cool that's, town. That's a phenomenal beer. Well, I really, just, really like it. It's super clean. You oh, know, it's, it's a lot so of times fresh. I mean, yeah, you get a, a a wild ale, a fruited wild ale, and a lot of times it's just it's way overdone. Uh, maybe maybe too much acidity, or it's just um, well, it's got a tart little bite to it. You know, it does, but it, it mellows off. I think pretty quickly. Yeah, like it doesn't quick. doesn't stick around. Like it's absolutely and it's, drinkable. It's, and th- all theirs are wild. They're wild fermented, so they're they open up the vats and let the natural yeast come in, and bam, you know that's what does it. So that's. That's a another science of, you know, brewing beer that, you know, I don't understand any of it. I just love drinking good beer like that. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I I would like to brew beer, but I'd like to. What I'd like to do is make really good beer, but I don't see that in my future, so I just don't make it. Well, you got the room for it. I don't know. I don't <laughs> know about that. Uh, anyway, so this one is awesome. I, I thought I'd drag this out of the. Out of the cellar and see what we could uh, we could do with it. What did you think about it, Steve? Yeah, you guys are changing my palate. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. Yeah. It's a good beer. Yeah. So it, the um so it is available only at the brewery. But Casey, uh, they're 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 very sought after. Um, you're, you're only going to find it at the brewery and probably not find this one there. They sell it at their tap room. Their beers. So not all of them, but some of them. Yeah. Some of them are available at the at the brewery. Like I said, though, it's right now it's closed. But um, to the public, I believe. But um, if you go up there, I'm sure they'd they'd uh, sell you anything they got available. That's for sure. I mean, it's a cool little tap room in that in that town, though, you know, of Glenwood Springs. As a matter of fact, I just drove through it again the other day when I was coming back from the trip. Un- unexpectedly drove through it. So yeah, it wasn't your plan, huh? No, 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 no. no. So when no. Ashley took you on that two hour detour, yeah, she figured out how to get around the fire that was going on up there. So we we took the uh, t- uh, the uh, Forest Trail Road and bonsai around the mountain. Uh, two hours later, we pop out in Glenwood Springs, Colorado, and I was I was pretty excited. I'm like, holy cow, we're right, you know, right in downtown uh, Glenwood Springs. So it was exciting. We jumped on the freeway and headed west, though. But uh, if we'd had more time, we probably would have popped in there and uh, grabbed a couple more beers while we were there because I'm sure they have something different by now. 
uh, something they were um, they were talking about uh, getting blackberries and raspberries for something. Uh, they had a, a low yield this year because of the frost or something that kind of knocked down or stunted the growth of the uh, berry plants so that they the yield was uh, like half of what they usually get. So, But they're going to take that and make it happen either way. So I'm excited for the next trip up there to so, Glenwood Springs. So when they brew something like this, are they how many bottles do you think they made of that? Oh, man, I would think, you know, Oh Not gosh! A lot. I mean, when you when you take a look at that, um, like that beer on on Untapped, there's like 700 check ins, okay. you know, over a year and a half. Right. So not a whole lot. I mean, I think it was when was it bottled? Um, it says uh, one thirty one nineteen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's you know eighteen months old, and they probably released it um, not not one thirty one, but middle of last year yeah i would imagine it's over and over a year there's only been like 600 check-ins so pretty uh, i can't imagine they they um they put out too many bottles like probably a one-time it's, release it's i i couldn't tell you how many bottles but i would imagine that you know i mean they're not a huge facility it's not like they have this just tons of storage room and stuff and all their barrels are stacked in their brewery i mean they're just on the lower level and it's it's pretty impressive. I mean, what they got going on there. I mean, and the people they have working there are super cool, very friendly. Um, if you take the tour, I'm, I would imagine that you'll experience everything and more of what I did. So that, I would just advise it when it happens again. But it's, uh, it's a go-to beer. I've, I've always liked their beers ever since you mentioned them and I saw what they had. I, was always, I always wanted to go there and get it. And then here I was in Colorado couple days early and i figured i'm just gonna buy everything i can so i did yeah so they um i'm, I'm reading about the um one of their previous releases of this funky blendery uh, blender preserves um but according to this post on their their instagram page uh they were releasing um up to two bottles to people that attended their brewery tour so you had to attend the brewery tour and then you could buy up to two bottles so there's you know a couple of hoops you have to jump through to uh, you got to be in Glenwood Springs and then procure a ticket to the brewery tour. Well, before you, you do it, you can do it online. I did it online, but yeah. uh, it's um, like I said, it was you know just super cool to see the experience and experience that whole setup that they had going on. I was I was impressed, thoroughly impressed, and you know I've been to a lot of breweries too. So so yeah, you were well, you were saying that they did some clean beers, they did some hazies and and yeah. they they stouts. So it's not just all no barrels. That's, yeah, but you're not going to get that at the brewery. You're going to get that at the tap room okay. in, in town. So and the, it's all brand new. I mean, it's I think it's a uh, they celebrated their uh, one year anniversary or something, maybe something like that uh, of their tap room. Uh, just super modern looking, you know, they got super friendly people working there and, you know, helpful. And I mean, it was just nice to sit there and have some beers and, you know, I walked back to my hotel. So it wasn't like I was, you know, having trouble or anything getting around in that town. It's super cool. You get to eat food. You can just order food and they'll bring it right to you from across the way there. You know, it's you have to nice. wear a mask while you're in there. Well, this was before the pandemic. Mm. Oh, I'm sure they are now, but. I would imagine they are, yeah. Very well. Don't hold me to that, though. I won't. I'm gonna. But, I'm going there and saying Charlie told me I didn't have to wear a mask. Yeah, that'll, they're going to go who? Exactly. Their exact words will be who? <laughs> That's a great beer. I, I definitely would. Uh, I, I would revisit um, that raspberry sour and and any any Casey uh, beer. I, I don't think I've had a bad beer from them. I, I haven't had any of their. Um, I don't think you brought back any of that outer range hazy. Um, I think all I've had is their, their sours, but every one of them has been just lights out. Yeah. They're the, the only other beers I brought back were other ones of these, you know, the two drum fruited one. Then there's a, an apricot one in there. That's um, I think it was a Weldworks and Casey. And then um, another, gosh, I can't remember. I had to go through a bunch of stack of boxes and whatnot. So, I'm just not. Brought back some really good beers from there. Yeah, I it would was, definitely. Um, it was very entertaining. So what else we got here for our second bottle? We have a uh, Bastion of Reason, a uh, stout from Bottle Logic. Uh, it's a collab with Pure Project. Let's get this guy open. I didn't notice it was Pure Project until after I picked it. Yeah. So 
Well, this is a uh, imperial stout aged in bourbon barrels, uh, finished with roasted peanuts, uh, and then uh, cocoa nibs. Uh, a couple different styles I like of cocoa, cocoa nibs. So let's see what we got here. Pour me. Ooh, yum. Wow. Good night. It smells like cocoa nibs. Take a whiff of that. Wow, you definitely smell cocoa and peanuts, I think. I smell peanuts and cocoa. Yeah. No, that definitely. Even, the, like, even the bottle caps. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty yeah. wild. Spent all you're allowed to drink. Yeah, no, that's, um, it definitely smells really good. It's a regular stout, not a, not a pastry it's stout. It's good. So not super thick. It's good, man. I just took a sip. It's fantastic. Wow, that, that cocoa nibs really, really shine through. Jumping you out. You get hit with that, that peanut, I think, in the background. Yeah, it's at the that, end, yeah. Right. Man. That's, that's a tasty beer. I didn't think it would be that good, to be honest. <laughs> you know, I, I, we've, we've been drinking, I think, um, so many killer stouts mm-hmm. right? That uh, and, and, and some pastry stouts, right? Thicker. Um, a little more viscous than this, but the but the flavor on this one is is uh, it's amazing. Where'd you pick that bottle up at? Uh, I think I was down at or up in um, at uh, <clears throat> the butchery up there in um, okay Del Mar Heights Road at the one Paseo or something. They had uh-huh. they had a bunch of bottles of this, and I just saw it and I grabbed. You know, I, anytime I see Bottle Logic, I'm yeah very excited. Yeah, that's a really good beer. I never had that. I know I um I wanted to pick it up when uh, when it released, um, but wasn't able to. Uh, I gave up making drives up to. I lied. I don't even know where I got it. To be honest with you, that's just a guess. <laughs> that's a good beer. <laughs> it doesn't really matter where I picked it up as long as we're drinking it, right? Yeah, no, for sure. So on the on the nose, you smell a lot of. Uh, you don't really smell the bourbon. I no. I can I can you smell, smell a, a little bit. Of it. Of it. Yeah. yeah, it's it's sharp. To the nose, but it's not. The peanuts just soften it up, and the nibs not soften it up. So I'd say you don't really. It doesn't really have a, a bourbony flavor. You can definitely taste the barrel. What are we? Is it like thirteen percent, Steve? Thirteen percent. Yeah. Ooh, that was a lot of lot you poured in my glass there, Chief. Yeah, I had to uh, give you a, a high fill there, and we got a little viscosity. No, it's definitely. Um, th- I think that bottle came out last year, nineteen as well. So I was kind of fearful that the that the peanuts wouldn't really come through, but you definitely do taste them. I can taste everything in there, man. I uh, I read a couple of reviews on this on this beer Did when you? when you had posted it, and, and people had said that it was that it came through really hot, like that the that the barrel really shined through, that it was really boozy. This isn't boozy at all. It must have mellowed. Like it, yeah, definitely. Time. Um, it was. There's it, definitely no like harsh. Yeah, it's no, it's taste super day. smooth. Well, it's, I can I can smell it in the in the in the nose, but I'm not. Uh, I just sniffed. I'm about to sneeze now. Good night. Mm. Uh, yeah, I can smell the the barrel, but I don't smell the booze uh, like you would like some other stouts that, that you and I have tasted. And I'm just like, nah, it's too much for me. I mean, yeah, it's just the the booze is overpowering. I mean, it's almost like you are somebody threw a shot in there with that pour. You right, know, that's heavy. You know, which I have drank, but. I would rather drink something like this. Just a kiss of barrel, right? Yeah. You, know, so you can taste all the flavors, which, yeah. it, I, I mean, it appears we can uh, well, in this beer. The Bottle Logic does a great job on their stouts that, I mean, I don't think I've drank. I've had their lager. I mean, that's a really good beer, too. I mean, but they must have um, really stepped it up with that Pure Project collab, though. Yeah, they're, you know, a lot of their, their Stassi Project beers are, you know, Fundamental Observation, Numbers yeah, Crunch, all that's of That's a go-to. Like, yeah, no, they, they jam the radar, all of the, all of their bottles. Their their barrel program is phenomenal. Um, I like it. I'm, I'm happy with it. Let's put it that way. I didn't think didn't think it was as good as, as it was. It's a very, very good beer. I would definitely, uh, I, I, would, I would run after that one again. I think, um, yeah, the... It's amazing how much cocoa you can you can really taste on there. Well, they must have dumped tons of it in there to get that. I mean, just alone on the uh, on the peanuts and the uh, cocoa nibs. I can't imagine just how much they have to put in here to get that smell right out of the bottle. It smells fantastic. That's a finished with roasted peanuts. And Canadian, what is that word? C A N A I A N, Ecuadorian cocoa nibs. 
What is that one right there? Uh, is that Garmin? Oh, it's a G. Yeah, I, think it's I need my prescription redone, I believe. I, well, I think is it G? Yeah, I think it's Ghanaian, like from Ghana, Ghana and Ecuadorian. Ooh, there's a lot of uh, a, a couple different. Oh, two cocoa different types nibs. of cocoa nibs. Okay, that's a uh, that's phenomenal. I'd probably um, I'd probably give that a four point five, four point four. I think the um, you're grading these things. I don't not, know how you grade them. I'm just so the, like, man, it's either good or it's. I, I mean, I think just it's, drinkable, you know. To me, I guess. I mean, if you want to give it a number, you know, I think um, I think I'd like a little. Uh, Bastion of Reason. That's a good beer. I like it. Yeah, so what about just like comparing them against other beers? Like, is yeah, that so another way of doing the, the rating? Like, well, so, this yeah, is my number at, one stout, and this is my next one, or something like that. Yeah, so you can, you know, if you look at like the, um, the score sheet, which I don't actually have right now, but it breaks it down in, um, in visual, uh, smell, like the, the taste. Um, yeah, but I, mean, I don't know about looks as far as smell and taste is my thing. I mean, you could blindfold me and I'd go, it smells say yes. great, yeah. you know. Drinks great. The thumb that's two thumbs up. Yeah, I could care less. I, I um, it's like when we were when you and I were at uh, uh, ah, the one up there in Austin, Texas. Uh, Jester King. Jester King. Yeah, I don't know why I'm forgetting everything today, but anyway, so the we're there and they had that beer that it was like it looked like red wine, and I was like, Good Lord, look at that stuff, you know. So I bought a, a glass of it. And I was thinking, you know, great, we need to get, you know, like six bottles of this, whatever it is. And uh, we couldn't get it because the guy said, that's the last of it. He goes, when that barrel's done, that's it. And I was like, what is it called? And I don't even remember what he said it was, but it was so phenomenal. But, I mean, just that look Mm -hmm. of it. Now, that was something that was intense. When you look at something like this, it's black. I mean, yeah. you can't really see anything other than that. I mean, it's it's. So you look at how it pours. Like, does it does it give a head? You know, like the um. It did, but I mean, it wasn't like you know. Hey, this is if you're pouring a stout to find a head on it. I, I don't know that you're going to get what you were expecting. I mean, you get, it does you get a little, like a little brown. White lacing, yeah. yeah, a little brown lacing sure. there, but it the smell is outstanding. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. I I just can't. You know, a stout is a color as a stout. There's not many that get darker or lighter to me. But now the viscosity is a little different. A little thinner. Yeah. Than, um, but I mean, we've had some that's stuck sure, to the entire style, glass. Right? I mean, you to just shake it out of there. Right. Like you look at some of those Horus stouts. Mm. I think the. They pour like, you know, like. Super s- thick. Syrup. You know, yeah. Kind of chugs out of the bottle rather than, you know, running out. But this is definitely a go-to for me. I mean, if I'd have known I had this in here, I'd probably have drank it. We wouldn't be drinking it together? (laughs) Well, thanks for the invite. You could have got me back for that one. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Post that up, say, oh, thanks for having me over for that one. That's a a phenomenal beer, though. Yeah. Um, They're legit. They do their thing, and they do it well. That's, you know, you can't complain when people are putting out great beers like that. Especially when they do other stuff great. I mean, their other stuff is really good. I mean, we we stood in line up there once, didn't we? Yeah, we've definitely um um I've been yeah, I've been to Bottle Logic a couple of times. Um Which surprised okay. me where it was. It was kind of in an odd spot, you know. Yeah, just a little industrial park over there. They've really expanded recently though. Um they they took over the building next door. They just opened a restaurant. I could do that. Food and bottle logic beer. I'm in. Yeah. Let's no, make that's- a road trip. You, are you busy tonight? <laughs> I'm, I'm on call for the next ten days. Oh, great! So, yeah, there's. Uh, All right. Well, cheers. Let's cheers let's, to that. Uh, what are you What are you doing for after potty here? So I, I did actually. I uh, my my cousin brought brought us a couple of beers from uh, um, from from up northern California. Um, one of them was northern California. Where's that? Well, this this I'm beer is. It's, uh, it's the Hen House Brewing Company in Santa the Rosa. Old Hen House. The old Hen House. Uh, the Walrus is Paul. That's an India Pale Ale with Centennial and Pacific Jade hops. Cuckoo, cuckoo. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna see how this guy is. And it's while you uh, you pop that guy, I will. Uh, I will take care of. Sorry, I had to clear my glass of the uh, voluptuous yeah, no, Casey brewing. Oh, you hear that? Crack a lacking. Did I have another glass from Casey no, here? No, you I, see, I see how it is. You just have to drink out of your own. So as it is, while uh, while Charlie pours these these beers for us. Um, I'd like to ask you once again, uh, if you, if you'd like to connect with the show, 
And you get all the show notes with the links to everything mentioned. You can find those at thepodcraft.com. Uh, the website also has links to, to help you subscribe so you won't miss any episodes. Uh, once again, please consider recommending the podcast to all craft beer fans in your life. And uh, me and Charlie are going to enjoy uh, this Walrus's Paul. This, Little uh, in-house. What do you think of that? Just a straight IPA. I think um, just I'm the India pale. Good nose off of it. it smells good, good. Yeah, for sure. You want to try that? Yeah, I'm gonna hit it. It looks a little hazy. It does. Yeah, it's, it's, it definitely isn't isn't as clear as you think. Like a like that's India a decent pale brew. I just I like the name of the can. I'll give them that. The can is super cool. Yeah. It's got a. Um, I mean, the beer's got the great. Beetles. I mean, we 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 stopped in there when we were hunting up there in uh, Hellsburg or Heelsburg. Heelsburg. Yep. Heelsburg. Don't when, say uh, Heelsburg. Yep, went. Uh, Might get in a bar fight if you say Hellsburg. That's right. Anyways, we were we were looking around for. Well, we were up at Russian River. We were River. hanging out with Giuseppe. Yeah, yeah, we were. We were hanging out with Charlie's buddy Giuseppe, and uh, well, we were they sent us over to the hen house. We had gone up to uh, Russian Mom- River. Yep, Russian River. Uh, Lagan. No, we didn't go to Lagunitas. We Not went that to, trip. We, we went to Cellar Maker. Yeah, but what was the other brewery right there? Um, it was Lagunitas. We, I think we did go to Lagunitas, right down the road. We went to, yep, we, yeah, Russian River. This is before uh, they were non-craft beer. This was, I mean, that was four years ago, I yeah, think. Yeah, it was a while. Uh, yeah, we went to the Hen House, Russian much River, Lagunitas, Cellar Maker, Firestone Walker. Yep. I think uh, that might have been Libertine. it. Libertine. Libertine. Yeah, that, that was, was an adventure. Yeah, that was definitely We'll a, tell yeah. that story when when there's no we mixed do a company Libertine around. Day. Yeah, that, uh. I'm ready. That was, no birthday party. I need a kid uh, to go to school up there. Megan's yeah. actually talking about going to school. Really? And slow. That'd work. But uh, this one, it's legit. I like it. Yeah, just a straight just straight IPA. Did a good job. Uh, that's a drinker. Right. That is that is a drinker. Or as they say wow, in really Instagram, crushable. That is crushable. I like, the, uh, I like the can. I like the beer. Thanks for that, Steve. Awesome stuff. Until next week, I'm Chris. Charlie. We'll see you again. Cheers. Cheers. The Podcraft Podcast is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution, Share Alike 4.0 International. All rights reserved 2020. The podcast is produced by AztecMedia.net. If you have questions, please email thepodcraftpodcast at gmail.com. Fair use notice. Reference material and media have been placed within this medium for information, educational, and discussion purposes only in compliance with the fair use criteria established in Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. It should also be noted that the opinions expressed on this podcast are those of the participants and are not endorsed by the participants' previous, current, or future employers or advertisers. You still here? It's over. Go home. Go.